Life is a precious gift I love and hold dear, and my art is the best way to express my appreciation for the joy and happiness and wonderful blessings in my life. You use a glass mirror to see your face, and you use works of art to see your soul. George Bernard Shaw. Good evening. Welcome to Expression and Painting by Paul Creamy. Tonight I brought some of the old uh, shows. This particular painting we did maybe two or three months ago. I have four of these, but I only brought three. I, I left one back, and I left the photographs of the still lifes back, so I'm not going to do a still life tonight. So what, I, what I've got here is, this was the first one we did in this series. Let me get this one out of the way. This was the first one, and it uh, has this beautiful green vase with the blue and the greens. And then we did this one. I think the whole series is going to be really nice. I'm going to do maybe 25, 30 paintings in this series. And I think they're going to get better as they go along. But I like the personality that they have. They have they're starting to have their own kind of feeling. And the third one is this last show we did, the one before we did the talk show about all the watercolors. And somebody actually tried to buy this painting, you know, and they still want to buy it. And I thought it was incomplete, but, you know, sometimes there's something about a painting that has this quality. This painting is one of those paintings. It's strange, but I like it. So I, I brought this other small canvas because I thought I was going to do another still life, but I forgot the photographs. I was in a, a kind of a flux trying to get out of the studio, get here a little early because my friend Colleen Smith has got a, a, a show tonight. I mean, um, they're having a, a game, and she's going to film the game, so... What I decided to do was a fall scene from my imagination, but I've been photographing the Indian Head River like crazy. You know, I fell in love with my digital camera this year, and uh, I hadn't taken a lot of pictures with it. So this year, I started shooting in the spring, and I've shot 3,000 photographs and I've been posting them on my website on the different groups. And I've fallen in love with flowers, and I've been doing tons and tons of beautiful flower photographs. A lot of people are enchanted by them. They're saying they're absolutely beautiful, and they are beautiful. I wish I could have brought some. So what we're going to do, I should put out some green. I got all of this colors in here, and I didn't put any green in here. So let me throw a little green in. So. Let me get this out of the container. I buy these containers at the dollar store, and they're great because they keep the paint fresh for months. I tell people, you know, if you really want to do something really funky and you keep the paint healthy, go out and buy these little plastic containers and get these little serving trays that they sell. And I'm telling you, you can keep your paints for the longest time because of it. All right, I got the green, I have orange, I have all the colors, so let's just start. We're going to start, and I'll sketch it out a little bit. Let me find this. I had a, here it is. All right, let me see. I'll lay it out a little so we get some idea. So... So the Indian Head River, you go over this little bridge and, and it goes from Hanson to uh, Hanover. And I've been sitting on the br standing on the bridge photographing all of these beautiful changings of the season. And there's all these, these beautiful trees and, and there's the water in here. So we'll start. Tons and tons of green. And then yet, when we have this changing of the season, 
gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And so when you do something like this, just put the paint on the canvas. Let, let it uh, speak to you in its own way. So we're going to really do some cute little scene here of uh, the Indian Head River in Hanson. Late summer, early fall, with the changing of the colors. And they never think about all of the things you're supposed to think about or talk about. I just paint. So it's going to take place within seconds in your mind, and all of a sudden you're going to start to see this painting come to life. This is probably one of the few places around that I wouldn't mind standing on the bridge and uh, doing a painting in, in the actual presence of the scene. Uh, they call it plein air painting. I don't particularly like plein air painting. I like the results of plein air painting, but I don't like doing it because it changes so rapidly. I like what Bernard, uh, one of the Impressionists, uh, after the Impressionist, who was a, a Bernard, a uh, French painter, we used to go and stand and look at the scene and then come to a studio and paint the painting. This is what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to do something similar to that. I'm going to paint this painting from that space inside my head that stores all of that fantastic memories. And you're going to see this take place right in front of your eyes, hopefully, and it will be beautiful. This is about the size of what a plein air painter would paint, too. They paint these miniature little paintings, or 8 by 10s, or 10 by 11s, or 11 by 12s, and they're like a sketch. And so th that sketch would go back to the studio, and they'd take a big canvas and they'd set the sketch to the side like a photograph. I've gotten to the point where I love the photograph so much, I don't do a lot of sketching anymore. But in, in the old days, I did a ton of sketching. I love pencil stuff. I love uh, pen and inks. I'm a printmaker at heart, and I had my own etching press. And I, I was visiting a friend of mine's studio today, and she was doing an anoleum cut. And my friend Marie Peters, magnificent printmaker, love her work, and she was showing me a, a series, she's done three or four of these beautiful linoleum cuts, and if you come and met me and I showed you my hands, you'd understand that I used to do a ton of those as a kid, and I had all of these scars on my hands, hundreds and hundreds of them from the tools when I was a little kid doing these linoleum cuts. Oh, they're called lino cuts today, but in the old days, that's what they called them. A piece of linoleum, and you'd do Christmas cards and seasonal things. In fact, I got hired once by an interior designer who worked for Macy's to do a series of black and white linoleum cuts so that they were going to put them in the, the, the change rooms. It never happened because the guy managed to get fired before I, I finished. It took me a year to do 35 of these beautiful prints. But th they come out really nice, and one of them, my daughter, a couple of them were my daughter, Ellen, and uh, she, because I did it such a nice job that they wound up in a couple of major shows on printmaking. So you never do something in your life that doesn't have some purpose and meaning. Moving along here. I should put out a dab of brown. Let me see if I have it here. I know I do. So I, I got this tray and I've got it all filled with these beautiful colors. Here's the brown. 
So it makes it so much more easier as a painter to have it all set up. And then after your day is done and you're working, you take this tray and you put it inside that plastic thing. And that plastic thing retains the quality of the paint. You can probably keep it there a month, month and a half. So I'm going back to my little sketch brush. So I'm using, there's somebody out there who will ask me what color you're using. I'm using a brown. And I'm just going to throw a few of these brown strokes along the water's edge. And this is not taking shape. You're just seeing me sketch it in. All of a sudden, you're going to start to see this come to life. Right before your eyes. In painting, visually and spiritually and emotionally, that, that all comes from that place way inside of you. You know, and it, you're looking at a scene, and even if you're looking at a scene, it still has its own personality and it has its own way of revealing itself. I did this painting of Indian Head last year, and uh, I put it in the cancer so uh, show that I do every year for uh, the Hanover Cancer Society. And uh, a woman who lived by this place came by the show and saw it and said, oh my god, I love this. I know where this is. This is the Indian Head River, and I see that scene all the time. And she bought the painting. And the Cancer Society made out really well because we got blizzarded out. We had put this show together for uh, that bad storm, and we lost the whole open house because of the storm. Well, nobody could get around. You couldn't even leave the house. So no more at the Cancer Society. From now on, when I have this show, it's going to be in my studio. If it gets snowed out, at least they can come the next day or come the next week. And they put it on a Wednesday. And people, how can they go to an art show on a Wednesday? Crazy. No, you just keep applying the paints, keep moving it around. Eventually, all of a sudden, you're going to start to see this. It'll, it'll uh, start feeling like the sun will be coming from this way here, and all of the reflections will be on the water. And Difficult for me to show you a picture of this until I do it. It'll start to come. Beautiful. So we had our first real cold night last night. It was 40 degrees. Unbelievable. 
We've had a fantastic run this summer. The weather has been great. What a what a summer. So I feel like, you know, if we're going to, we had a summer like that, we're going to have a really powerful winter. Usually that happens after we have a very hot summer. Yeah, the winter's going to, we're going to pay the price somewhere along the line. Well, another good thing is if you, <laughs> I'm just, my, my camera person's going to throw fit. I picked up the palette. You can hold the palette like this and uh, you can do some stuff like this with the palette. I'm only teasing for a second here. I'll put it right back down so she won't have a heart attack. Her first day here and I've already got her chasing around trying to find the palette. I'm going to put it back down. So you can pick that up and use it in your hand like a regular palette too, which is nice. It makes a big difference. So uh, this painting is going to look more impressionistic than realism, but I love impressionistic anyways. Uh, I call myself a contemporary impressionist. Just keep looking at the canvas and certain spots. I have this picture in my mind. I know exactly where I'm going. It's very difficult for you in the audience that's sitting there watching and saying, what's this guy doing? It doesn't look like it has any rhyme or reason. But as, it, as I build it up, you'll start to see it. It'll start to make sense. You know, each painting has its own start in the middle and the end. But I, I've discovered, you know, if you just keep putting the paint on the canvas, eventually you're going to get to where you want to go, which is a positive place. I'm going to put a little yellow. This is like, like a dark yellow over here. This side's going to be lighter than this side. This side's going to be a little darker, but you got to keep applying the paint until you build it up. And it'll start to Start to see it. Because we haven't got to this stage of the fall season yet, but I'm going to make this very colorful. I want it to have a really dynamic feeling when it's done. Tiny, like a little gem.
In painting, it's something that you feel as well as you see. You know, after all these years, I tell people, you know, painting is a, an expression of your soul and how you feel about it. Especially from your painting from your imagination and you don't have anything to look at. I can paint this whole entire painting with this tiny little tiny brush. You just got to be patient, take your time, and keep putting paint on the canvas. I did bring my reducing mirror. I did remember something. So this reducing mirror pushes the painting back and gives you a, an idea of where you're going. See the orange back here is way too strong, so well, let's knock it down. By knocking it down, we're making this orange come forward. Now, if you live local, and if this show is done local, this is done in Hanover at the Hanover High School, and the young lady that's in charge is Colleen Smith, and uh, you can go over this little bridge coming out of Hanson and going into Hanover on Broadway, and you'll see this scene. A lot of people go by so fast they never see it, but a lot of people have seen me on that bridge all this summer and all this fall, stopping and taking all kinds of photographs. And it is absolutely a beautiful scene. The other day I was there and there's a bunch of geese on the liver. I took a whole series of photographs of all the geese. There must have been 12 or 14 of them just floating in the water, sitting there, doing their geesey things, whatever they do. I they eating the stuff that's in around the water and I said, oh my God, beautiful, beautiful. And that's what you do. You stop and look once in a while. And you say, wow, I got to make the sky a little lighter. So I'll make the sky a little lighter. And I just put this really red, fiery red bush in here, a tree. So some of that over here. You're going to see this come to life. It, it takes a few minutes, you know, and, and I'm ha not hurrying it. Just going to paint away. 
this is what I do in my studio. I, I stand in front of the easel and I apply color after color after color in different spots, go back and forth, back and forth. And all of a sudden, I'll go sit in the rocking chair and I'll go look and I'll say, oh my God, what a beautiful situation. It really came to life. Painting is something you do for the pleasure of doing it. People tell me, ah, I never painted before. I, don't. I heard a story of a woman at a, what was I reading it? I'm, I'm sorry, there's so much I do all the time. Uh, but um, so I think somebody was telling me the story. Yeah, I think the lady didn't start painting until she was 64 years old and she never painted in her life. And somebody had gone to this woman's house and she was walking through looking at these paintings. And she said, oh, my God, they just took my breath away. They were absolutely magnificent. And the, and the lady asked the woman that owned the house, who did the paintings? And she said, my mother started painting at 64, never had any lessons. And she painted these magnificent paintings. And uh, that kind of thing, everybody has an innate ability inside of them. It's just when they have the courage to let it out in any age. I mean, Whistler's mother, they said, was in her 80s when she started painting. So I believe that all of us, if you admire art and you have a desire to do it, then that means that you have that innate ability inside of you and that you should paint. I was talking, uh, communicating on Facebook with a girl from Scotland, and she's been on my website a ton of liking all of these paintings that I do. And telling me how much she loves the paintings and which ones she loves and all that. And I said, well, why don't you start painting? You know, you, if you have that desire and you like other people's work, then it's kind of evident to me that you can paint. All you have to do is do it. You know, sometimes there's this voice in our ears saying, no, you're not good enough, or you're, you're not that voice causes more problems. You just have to, sh I tell people when they start a, a class to not to listen to anything that comes from that space. Only positive food feedback. You keep thinking good things about what you're going to do and just keep doing it until it's done. Until you've gotten to that place where the painting starts to make sense and it's beautiful. This is starting to take a little bit of shape now. You see, in only a little bit of time we're starting to see the flow of the river. The river's going up a little too high right in here, so I'll just knock it down. I'll knock it down by adding a little a movement into the river. And don't take anything you say that you do seriously because there's so much that changes in a second. I mean, I, I very seldom get crazy about what I'm doing. I get crazy about what I've done after it's done. I sit in my rocking chair and I'll say, oh my God, that's beautiful. Because I know what I went to to get to it. Sometimes that's a good thing. But don't be too critical on yourself when, it, when you're painting. That's what I'm trying to say. Just keep painting. I tell people the worst thing you could do if you hate the painting start all over again by painting the canvas black and begin again. I have a whole bunch of paintings when I was first starting that I must have painted 10 or 12 paintings on the same canvas. 
Those people that bought those paintings, they'll have no clue that there's that many paintings underneath those canvases. I don't do that anymore. Thank God. Finally, you get to a stage in your life where you actually think you know what you're doing. That's scary. Don't, don't take it for granted. This, this is a gift. And the gift is being able to paint and being able to believe that you can paint. And that part of believing you can paint is so important. Half an hour has gone by already. Let's get serious now. I'm really going to start to paint this. You're going to see the paint fly out of here now. I'm going to put a lot of color in it so that it really has really has a lot of movement, a lot of action, a lot of power. Something in the attic, I think. I don't know what's crawling around up there. It must be above us. It must be cleaning the high school. Wild. The ghosts are moving around. Wild. I'm telling you, that's the first time that's happened. We'll have to get the janitor not to move the furniture half while we're doing our show here. It's crazy. So I just put cat and nine tails in there. I saw a few of them right along the water. I'm going to put a few over here. I'm going to start to really put some paint on this thing, and it's going to start to come alive. Hopefully, it will be until we get to the end. I think it's time to change the brush. Let's go to a little bigger one now. We've been using that tiny brush the whole time. Let me see if I can find something that I like. Maybe this one.
So you keep painting. That's the, that's the key to this whole thing. Just keep putting paint on the canvas. Eventually, you'll have so much paint on the canvas that it'll look real. And if it doesn't look real, that's okay, that's okay too. And you know, don't worry about the sky. If you don't want to keep the sky in, just keep painting until the sky can disappear. You know? I just put paint on the canvas. That's what I do. I look at certain spots, and I want you to go from one spot to the other. So you put the paint there. So a painting is subconscious. That's, a, that's the only way I can explain it. When you've been painting, I've been painting painting since I was seven years old, and I'm 70 in December. So I have painted a whole bunch of these things in my life. And I think that every time I paint, all of that experience starts to come to the surface. But you know something? It's still applying the paint. It's still doing it. It's still doing what you do and not being afraid of doing what you do. The minute somebody says to me, I can't paint, then they can't. When they say to me, I'd like to paint, then I say, you can paint. Don't start off with a negative statement because it's like, it says in the Bible, what you say with your tongue actually happens. So I'm very, very protective about people who want to paint and people who say they can't paint and all of that. And I say, anybody can paint if they want to put the effort into just applying the paint. So as you go back, it should get lighter, and as it goes forward, they should get darker on the bottom. So that's what I'm doing, going back over these. And you know, I brought my blower. I should dry some of this, so maybe I can get some of this to work. Just to take out the, the, the wetness of the paint, so that the next layer of paint that I put on will make a big difference. I mean, a lot of people don't like acrylics because they say they dry too fast. They don't dry fast enough for me. Oh. I'm always way ahead of where I'm going. My mind is racing. And you know something? These lights aren't as bad as the last place I painted in. But some of these places where you paint, I know we were painting in... Uh, Whitman or, no it wasn't Whitman, it was another place. I think it was uh, Norwell. The lights were so bright, I never saw the painting. Never ever, ever saw the painting until they shut the lights off. Sometimes I do that here. Once they shut the lights off, I see the painting again. And I say, oh my God, it's got so much personality. What a beautiful job. I'm not bragging about myself. I'm bragging about the fact that it's accomplished, it's done, it's there.
this is starting to sing. It has its own little voice. Love it. And that's how you paint a painting, by applying paint. You keep putting it on top of each other. All of the stuff in the background, this orange is playing against this yellow. The blue is a complement to the orange. I should throw a little violet in there. Let's see if I have some. Make a little violet. Throw a little purple in there. We'll have this beautiful... You know, I go by there one day and it's green and then I go by and there's all this purple stuff. You know, there's that stuff that comes out in the, and I say, oh my God, it's gorgeous. So I'm um, Paul Creamy on Facebook, and then I have a, a, a Facebook art page called Paul Creamy Fine Arts. Every time I mention this, I get a whole bunch of friends' requests. That, that, and I think that's incredibly good because, you know something, I think that Facebook is meant to be a place where you meet people and express yourself, and they get to see what you do. And then Colleen, she posts all of these beautiful shows. And it, the, I'm telling you, people really enjoy looking at art. I have a girl from Scotland, and she's been following my stuff, and she says to me, I can't paint, but I love what you do, and I love the stuff that I see on the, on the site. And I said, no, oh, thanks. Because you love it, you should paint. Always do what you love in your life, because your life is so short. Yeah. We're going. We're getting there. So we started this painting, you know. I threw a few lines here and there. I put a few colors here and there. All of a sudden, we got this incredible painting. And it's really starting to have its own voice, its own physical presence. Nice. You're in charge. What you do and how you do it is your own choice. And you can't mess up. It's impossible. Nobody's seen this scene. This scene came out of my head, right in front of your eyes. Every scene that you do is like that. It's yours. 
15 minutes. We really zipped through this show tonight, I'll tell you. I love it. I want to get a tiny, tiny brush, something with only a few strands. Ah, this one. These brushes become tiny, tiny because they're constantly rubbing against the canvas. I'm going to love to see this cam uh, pertaining without the lights. I can't wait to see what it looks like. These lights are beautiful in here, and they make a big difference, but I like, can't wait to see what it looks like. So you've done a beautiful little on the river fall scene of the Indian Head River. And I hope that person that bought the last one saw this because then they get to see how this thing all takes its shape and how an artist sees what he does and how he does it. We painted that last one on this show, too. I told her uh, I'll try to get her the uh, CD. Cat and nine tails are putting those little heads on the nine tails. Now I'm doing all of this from just out of my brain somewhere that this whole photograph or this scene is coming from, which I love. And, you know, as I go along in this particular painting, all of these paints get mixed in together and the colors become so vibrant, so alive. And don't be afraid to put a lot of, another thing is, you know, don't treat the paints like they're important. The paints are only the process. 
It's the finished result that's important. So don't be stingy with the paint. Put it on there, really. Just throw it on the canvas. The, I, feel, I feel the more you put on the canvas, the more real the thing feels. It starts to have a life of its own. It starts to jump out at you. That's great. It's almost 3D. Oh, we've painted a painting tonight. We did a small little 9 by 12 painting of the Indian Head River in the fall. Man, this got color, hasn't it, huh? Woo. Boy. Hey, I'm acting like God. Uh, you know, God's the source of all the color, and God's the source of all the, the great things that we see. And so he instills each and every one of us with the love of what we do and why we do it. And it becomes quite apparent that certain feelings and, and attitude show up in what we do. Well, I didn't have a photograph, but we had a lot of fun. And this is not finished. This is a sketch. And so when you do a sketch like this, sometimes I'll go to the studio and I'll get up and start to uh, mess with it. And all of a sudden, it has a whole other feeling. Yeah, got a real dark tree right here. Let's do something with that. Just Go back to that tiny brush again. No, oh, that's not it. There it is. Yeah. I must be getting close. I can feel the time is getting closer and closer. 
So what I'll do is when I get in the studio in the morning, I come in and I look at this thing. There'll be certain spots that need a touch here and a touch there, like I'm just doing right now. I just add a little bit of different colors, to, and it sort of makes them jump a little. Yeah, and I say, wow. When you get to a stage in the painting, this is like three quarters of the way done. That's when you've got to be a little careful, a little more conscious of what you're going to do. All of the rest of it is attacking, attacking, attacking. And all of a sudden, you get to that stage where it's going to be fine-tuned. It's like, how do you end at the very end? A friend of mine used to say to me, you need somebody to come by and hit you with a two-by-four. That tell you, put down the brushes, you're done. That's the only good thing about getting old or getting older. You know when you're done and you're not. You know when it's time to put down the brush. And I'll go by and I'll, I'll, I'll help some of the young people in my building that are, that are going through. I have a guy that didn't start painting until he was 80, and now he's 86. And uh, he's quite a good painter. But he goes through the agony of knowing, what is it done, Paul? What, when do I know it's finished? And I said, when you say to yourself, I'm not doing any more, then it's done. This is three, almost 90% done. But you see, I just went in and added a few colors, and it's changed it. It's, it's given it another few seconds of life, a different feeling, and I love it. Because this is alive. It's got a nice, quiet approach to what painting is all about in what, the, what we live in. I mean, I tell people, this is my way home. I see this scene on my way home all the time, and, and I look forward to it. So, great. So, we're at the end of the show. We've got three minutes. So I got three minutes to throw some paint on here and really have a, a final hala. Let's go get it, Paul. So I'm going to really throw a, a bunch of really strong, heavy color. Might even throw one over here, just sneak a couple in here, further in the back, a little along the hairline here. All right. There you go. Fall along Indian Head River in Hanson that crosses the river to Hanover. There's one spot I just saw. And you saw me do it, and I did it out of my head, and it's a beautiful, exciting painting. All you have to do is have the courage to put paint on a canvas and say, I'm going to do something and do it. That's the key to painting. There's a lot of people who say, I want to do something, I want to do something, and they never do it. When you start saying, I want to do something, I want to do something, say, start saying, I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something, and the next sta stage is, I've done something, and, and I'm happy with what I've done. So painting, and painting and expression is a way of expressing yourself. It's a visual expression. It teaches you, oh, the colors in this are absolutely stunning. It teaches you that we are a creator of our own imagination and our own soul and our own being. So all you have to do is paint. Don't ask anybody permission. Don't ask anybody to criticize it. Don't ask anybody to judge it. Just do it. In the act of doing, you'll get to know who you are and what you are. God bless and good night.